should all switch back to water. Okay. <laughs> big, big week up at the lodge this week. I'm thinking about making a little real estate investment, get myself a little piece of property, thinking about buying that chunk of land that Fuzzy Norton has for sale down by the Mercury Creek Bridge. <laughs> Uncle Red, that, that, that's not land. No, no, land is dry. <laughs> And land is off in Times Square. You know, that's, that's triangular and, and, uh, and, well, it's triangular and it's wet. Yeah. You know, it's, it's like a big diaper. <laughs> <laughs> Smells like mine, too. You know, you got it, you got it. Well, now, Harold, don't get excited here. It's a free market, okay? Fuzzy wants to sell and I want to buy. Oh, I don't know why. <laughs> you can't build on it. You can't even, you know, park on it. Anything over 200 pounds sinks right to the bottom. <laughs> there goes 90% of the lodge members right there. And so, I guess, I guess then, Harold, either I have a plan or I'm an idiot, huh? Oh, good, okay, huh? Because <laughs> usually you have a plan and you're an idiot, but this way, <laughs> I'm oh, Easy, easy, oh, okay. easy, easy. You know what the word expropriation means, Harold? You ever heard that one? Yes, I, I've heard of it and I yeah. didn't know what it means. Huh? What does it mean? Oh, you want to know? Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, it means, uh, well, it's like if a government's going to buy, you know, your property for, yeah. like, put up a park or something yeah, like that, yeah. a park or something like that. How about for a highway, Harold? Oh, yeah, yeah, right, yeah. Like, what, the government's going to build a highway that's, like, triangular and floods and sinks? <laughs> well, something like that, Harold, but, hey, you and I are the only ones in the area that know about it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, I'm willing to forget it if you are. <laughs> Here's a few selected clips from this week's show, and, and these are the highlights, folks. Boy, oh boy, a little bit of everything. Something for the whole family here. I'm not sure I want to meet that family. It's a good show. This is priceless. A memorial service is being held this evening for Mr. Dave Knight. If anybody can remember who he is, would you please attend and express our deepest condolences? Thank you. Lock him down. Okay, Harold. I'm getting real close on this real estate deal. I got Fuzzy down to 400 bucks. Wow, how much was he asking? 400 bucks. <laughs> but, you know, but I'll tell you, the place has been for sale for so long, he was thinking of raising the price. <laughs> Fuzzy's not too swift, you know. <laughs> well, he was swift enough to sell you a sinkhole for $400. <laughs> oh, no, not just me. I got partners, Harold. You know. <laughs> I, I really couldn't come up with the 400 bucks all on my own, so there's 85 of us. We kicked in. Uh, <laughs> And we, uh, we kicked in five bucks a piece. <laughs> There's 85 and you put five dollars in to make 400. Yeah. <laughs> Boy, you're not very good at math, Uncle Ray. <laughs> no, 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 Harold. They're not very good at math. I'm up 25 bucks. <laughs> Respect for nature is a sport that's always in season. Like when something is called a stink bug, there's probably a pretty good reason. When you step on a stink bug, it's locked like a slug or snail. That's why my eyes are watering, and that's why my shoes are for sale. It's time to play the Possum Lodge word game! This week's grand prize is a real special one. Picture this, two weeks aboard a luxury cruise liner, stopping in various ports throughout the Western Caribbean. Sunshine captured forever. And where is all those wonderful memories gonna go? Inside today's grand prize, a photo album. <laughs> Supplied by Phyllis's Photos and Flowers Emporium. All right, Uncle Red, you have 30 seconds to get Mr. Arnie Dolgan to say this word. Plug your ears, excellent. The word is talent. <laughs> Alan. And goal. All right, uh, Arnie, uh, special ability. I I contortionist. No, no, Arnie, being a contortionist is not a special ability. Well, I guess, guess you've never made out on a roofing ladder, eh, Red? Hey? <laughs> 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 no, no problem. Okay, we're running out of time. Come okay, on. Oh, yeah, okay, okay. okay, Arnie, uh, I know. What do you need to make it in show business? Breast implants? <laughs> like people, when people find out you're a singer, they say you must have... Thick skin. You know the Grammy Awards? Okay. Yeah. They give awards to people with the most... Jewelry. <laughs> the clock's ticking. 
in clocks ticking. Okay, okay, Arnie, Arnie, you're a pretty good roofer, right? Yeah, oh when yeah. people see your work, they say, you have real... Oh, no, not me, Red. The, the emergency room fracture unit, they're the ones with the talent. Eh? Uh -huh. <laughs> Man Corner. I was going to show you how to make a catapult out of one of them hideaway beds to help get your teenagers up in the morning. <laughs> but on the way over here, I was passed by a red convertible sports car, and the woman driving it had the top down on the car. And I thought to myself, man, would I love to have one of those. The convertible, that is. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I love the feel of wind in my hat. But you know, I, I hate to give up the roominess and safety of a van to ride around in something of the size of one of them kiddie rides at the supermarket. So instead, this week on Handyman Corner, I'm gonna turn the possum van into a convertible. <laughs> Not sure exactly how I'm gonna do it, but I'll, I'll figure out a way. Yeah, I could, uh, no, no. I, I was gonna make a convertible out of the possum van, you know, just cut the roof off or something. And I thought, wait a sec, what if something goes horribly wrong and I ruin my favorite vehicle? Then I got an idea. A brainstorm. It just hit me. Hey, <laughs> Porky Lansford has a van, and he loves convertibles, eh? Especially if he can get one for free. And you know what else? It'll be a surprise. <laughs> what I've done here is I, I got this model. That's one of Harold's, actually. And I'll show you what I got in mind. I'm a car. And that should work great. Now to do the cutting, uh, I would suggest you need something heavier than uh, than a hacksaw, unless you've recently retired and are looking at some way to fill up your days. You know? But I would say go with a torch on that. And uh, if you don't have a torch, well. I'd say get one. <laughs> Just get her good and hot. And start cutting. All right. Made all the cuts. Oh, oh boy. Oh, oh. I probably should have used the hacksaw on this, but it was just a test. It'll work a lot better on the van. Almost. Almost through. Oh. Clean the van out first. All right. We got ourselves a convertible now just to turn it back into a hard top. We got to cut this up a little bit more and put some hinges on the side here. Now you could uh, put regular hinges on there, but I would recommend the handyman secret weapon, duct tape. All right, we got our uh, sections all in place now. Now we need some kind of a mechanism to raise and lower the roof. And for that, you need three things. A two by four, a car jack, and grade 10 physics. <laughs> what you do is you take the two by four, you lay it on the car jack, see? And then what you do is you got the thing near the center of the fulcrum of the position of the force. And then when you jack up the car, then you'll raise the roof. Let's give her a try. All right, uh, you know, it looks like it's gonna rain another couple of weeks, so uh, why don't we just jack it up and raise the roof? <sighs> oh, look at that baby go. Yeah. <sighs> All right. So remember, if the women don't find you handsome, well, get a convertible. <laughs> I wonder when that storm's gonna hit. Over. I want to talk to you older guys who have more miles on your odometer than you have left on your warranty. <laughs> Maybe some of you are thinking that one day soon, well, you're going to go to sleep and not snore. <laughs> Ever again. <laughs> now, I'm talking about shuffling off this mortal coil and taking the big dirt nap. And some of you are probably thinking, you know, maybe I should start going to church again, you know? Kind of build up your credit and pay your entrance fee into the pearly gates. Yeah. That kind of thing. You used to go to church all the time. It's not your fault that the best golfing and fishing time is Sunday morning. 
and now you're worried that God being all powerful and all knowing maybe he's not gonna let you back into the flock since you strayed for five decades or so <laughs> but that's the great thing about God he'll forgive you it's never too late it is never too late so no rush to go back to church <laughs> I say wait until you're too old to golf or fish huh? <laughs> It is never too late. Personally, I'm planning on a deathbed thing. <laughs> Remember, I'm pulling for you. We're all in this together. <laughs> ah, I got the deed all signed over, so that land is officially ours. Well, Uncle Red, I heard there is no highway coming through. I heard that you dream this whole thing up. <laughs> Now, this big scheme of yours is supposed to be what happens to a person after they have 50 years of unattended head injuries. No, uh, Harold, don't worry about that rumor. Doesn't bother me a bit. Want to know why? Why? I started it, Harold. Okay. <laughs> I'm just trying to cool off my real estate partners. <laughs> well, it worked. I heard they were going to sue you. The only reason they backed off, though, is because they thought, you know, the legal fees would cut into their $5 claim. <laughs> None of that matters, Harold, okay? I offered to give guys all their money back and they've accepted, okay? So from now on, the property and the profit, when I sell it, will be all mine. Well, how come if you can afford to pay them all back, why didn't you just buy the land on your own the first time? Well, because I gotta pay for the land today. The refunds to the guys can be deferred. <laughs> well, that's, that's high finance, Harold, that's beyond you, huh? Oh, yeah, 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 no, no, I, I think I got it. Like, you just want to sit around and do nothing and make money, but you didn't want anybody else hoarding in on it. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Where'd you get so smart about money? I watched that show, Trader. <laughs> I'm, I'm totally ashamed of your greed. I'm just saying. Well, fine, Harold. Give me 200 bucks. I'll cut you in for half the profit. <laughs> no, thank you. There's going to be no highway. Therefore, there will be no profit. Well, then, how can that possibly make me greedy? Amazing, Uncle Red. You're taking selfishness to the point where it actually helps people. <laughs> I'll talk to you teenagers about setting a good example. That's what you're doing. Oh, yeah, you're setting an example for a very impressionable and vulnerable group who want to dress like you and act like you. Namely, adults. <laughs> yeah, see, adults can't admit they're over the hill. They want to be young again because they realize how badly they blew it the first time around, they want a second chance. And they figure as long as they dress like teenagers and act like teenagers, nobody will notice that they're old and wrinkled and out of it. <laughs> and I started wearing the spandex, so did adults. Yesterday, I saw a 250-pound jogger look like a 3D neon map of the former Yugoslavia. <laughs> and Bosnia was infringing on Serbia. <laughs> you teenagers started wearing the platform shoes and the polyester clothes. Now the adults are getting out their old flower power t-shirts and bell-bottom jeans. And at this point, the bottoms are a lot bigger than the bells. So before you do or wear anything, take a minute and think about how your parents are going to look doing and wearing the same thing. And if nudity ever becomes a teenage trend, we're in for one ugly summer. Well, uh, this week on uh, Adventures with Bill, Harold and Bill, look out, look out, look out, look out, Harold, look out. Wow, I guess Bill was trying to paint them. <laughs> they were out in those paintball units we got out, uh, out near the lodge. And uh, I don't know whether this crosses over from a sport into an argument or eventual war. Anyway, they're getting their coveralls on there. And oh, 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 Bill, you got the gun. Oh, man. There's something for you youngsters. Don't ever fire a gun inside your coveralls. All right, they're going over to the practice range there. They had the uh, the dummies of the men, you know, to the cutouts. The cutouts, they're shooting away. Look at them shooting. Look at them go. Oh, my gosh. I hope there's never another war, because we won't win. Oh, my. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just relax. Go see how you did. Go on, check targets. Where you go? Go see how you did. Where you go? How do you think this went? Look at Harold. Well, you got him surrounded. How'd you do, Bill? <laughs> oh, it's a murder-suicide. <laughs> All right, so then they go out there and they have, they have these war games. Oh, look at that, eh? Bill's got the telescope looking for Harold and, uh, where is he? Where is he? Oh, it's Bond. <laughs> Plyo Bond. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> How'd that go, would you say, out of 10? 
mountains, I thought. So Bill's wandering around, strange thing happens now. He uh, has a little discussion with a tree. Oh! And Bill had a complete uh, personality change there. And unfortunately and surprisingly, it was worse. He, he got very violent and started really arming himself for a huge Armageddon type paint, a paint Armageddon. Got the paint spray cans there on the, on the Grenadade, uh, Grenadade, the Grenadade, you know what I'm saying? Oh my gosh, it's not Rambo, it's Hambo. And there he goes, chasing Harold around through the, oh my gosh. Harold, run, run, run like the wind. Oh, <laughs> look at the nipples on that. All right, way too far. There goes that little hand grenade. Watch out, Harold, watch out. Oh my gosh. You all right? You all right? Oh, oh, oh boy, they're, they're coming thick and fast. Oh my gosh. Oh, it's the bottle of Britain. Oh boy. Way to go, Harold, run. Oh, he's got the paintbrush darts. Look out, look out. Oh my gosh, the one inch, that's a two inch. Oh, Harold, Harold, no, no, Harold, come back, come back. No, he's not a bad little dancer. Oh, oh. And then Bill banged his head and unfortunately, he's back to normal. Yeah, peace loving Bill. And coming back, apologizing to Harold. Everything okay, Harold? Yeah. No harm done, eh? No harm, no foul. Don't know what came over me. Ah, Harold's very, very forgiving, eh? Just rolls right off. Right, Harold? <laughs> hey! Well done now. Well, Uncle Red, it seems I owe you an apology. Yeah, you always do, Harold. <laughs> well, you're absolutely right. They're building a brand new highway. <laughs> Yep, it's gonna go from Mortonville to Dingleburg, right up to Mount Walter, and straight into Port Asbestos. <laughs> Therefore, yes, it will be crossing your brand new property. Whoa. Why are you talking so weird? You've eaten a lot of plums, have you, Harold? <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm just saying that you were right. I was wrong. You right. Me wrong. What's that hunk of wire you got there? Wire? Oh, no, no, this is a cable. Huh? This is a stretch of the new highway. What? Pardon me? Our new information highway. <laughs> Fiber optic cable. Yeah. Seems they're gonna string it from telephone pole to telephone pole all the way into Port Asbestos. So you're saying the new highway is an information highway, Harold? Oh yes, for your information. <laughs> Mr. www.greedy.com. Welcome to the repair shop part of the show we call, If It Ain't Broke, You're Not Trying. <laughs> Hap Shaughnessy has brought something from his house for me to fix. Right, Hap? Yeah, this uh, picture frame needs repairing, right? But it's not from the house, it's from the Louvre. Oh, yeah? <laughs> you, uh, you got this hung in your bathroom, do you? Not the Louvre, Red. Oh. The Louvre in Paris. Oh, the Louvre. Oh, yeah. It's like an art gallery or museum or something. Yeah, you might say that, yeah. <laughs> well, I donated this Impressionist painting when I was living on the West Bank there. And this, this week they shipped it back because the frame was falling apart. Mm. <laughs> what is this now? Is this a Van Gogh or a Monet? A Hap? <laughs> It's a hap. One of my better ones. Yeah. You painted this, did you, hap? No, it's from the green period. Well, you know, it sure seems like one of those printed posters, doesn't it? Careful, Red. Huh? Took hundreds of hours to get the paint to lie flat like that. <laughs> now, about the frame. What about the frame? Yeah, yeah, I'll fix the frame. Well, no, 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 the frame. no. What? You can't do duct tape. Oh, sure. This is priceless. No, Hap, you're priceless. <laughs> I'll put the tape on the back. How's that? There you go. She's fixed. In the art world, we say restored. Right, right. And you know what? It's as good as new, or as you say in the art world, fake. <laughs> You know something? This whole highway expropriation project has taught me a very valuable lesson. We're trying to teach your friends, make sure you do all your homework? Well, Harold, the lesson is life rewards the risk takers. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> You're out 400 bucks and you want a piece of swamp. 
<laughs> uh, you see, Harold, none of that is true. Did I miss something? <laughs> well, you're missing so many things, actually, Harold. <laughs> now, for starters, the guy I brought the property from, Fuzzy Norton, he passed away in his sleep during the sermon in church. That's terrible. Yeah, that's unfortunate, especially for him. <laughs> but in his will, he left the $400 to the lodge, and the lodge decided to use that money to buy my property. Oh, really? Yeah. 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 When was this decided? At an emergency meeting with an open bar. <laughs> I, I managed to convince everybody the value of owning a bog. When so many of us have the old appliances and the cars and so on. You know, I figure that real wet spot will suck down a four burner stove in less than a minute. It's a real win-win situation. I think so. Yeah. Unless, of course, you're the planet Earth. <laughs> oh, it's meeting time, Uncle Red. Yeah, you go ahead, Harold. What, you want to come down? Maybe you can sell more mistakes to your friends. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, but your parents might want to give it a try. Uh, if my wife is watching, uh, didn't have quite the profit margin we'd hoped for on the real estate deal, so we're going to have to put off the investment into those black velvet paintings of Elvis, but hopefully the price won't go up. <laughs> so the rest of you, thanks for watching. On behalf of myself and Harold and the whole gang up here at the Lodge, keep your stick on the ice. got some announcements. Okay, first of all, uh, with the information highway coming into Possum uh, Lake area, a lot of the lodge members have been asking questions and concerns. So first of all, no, you cannot catch a computer virus. Uh, second, the World Wide Web is not a tool of Satan or any attempt to impose world government on you. Uh, third, the internet won't make you sterile. You okay? And, and finally, yes, I, uh, uh, yes, I do know there is offensive material on the internet. And for $10, I'll show you how to find it. Okay. <laughs>